Hey YouTube, today I'm gonna to make some kimchi. A lot of people come to this channel and see all the fermenting recipes and, and go looking for a kimchi recipe and are disappointed when they don't find one. So I guess I gotta do up some kimchi. If you don't know what kimchi is, kimchi is a Korean fermented vegetable. Most of the kimchi recipes that you see on here will be fermented cabbage, fermented Napa cabbage. And they don't have to be. Kimchi is basically fermented vegetable. It can be anything. So a lot of the recipes that you see on here are for, you know, six pounds of cabbage and one cup of carrots and two cups of sliced matchstick daikon radish. And then I wonder what they're doing with the rest of the, with the, rest of the ingredients. They cut up half of the, of the daikon and then throw the rest of it away. I don't, I'm not sure. So like I said, the bulk of our ferment today is going to be with a Napa cabbage. We'll cut that up. We're going to peel and cut a daikon radish or a, a Korean white radish into matchsticks. We'll do the same with our carrots. Cut up some green onion and put it in there. And then we're gonna make kind of a slurry to ferment the vegetables in. And that's gonna be a yellow onion, about half a cup of garlic cloves, some ginger, some fish sauce. If you're making the vegetarian version, leave the fish sauce out. It's not necessary, but I like to put it in because it gives it a, more of an authentic Korean flavor. And then the other ingredients in that slurry are gonna be rice powder, which acts like kind of a, a, a glue to stick the red pepper powder and the flavoring to the cabbage and to the vegetables. And finally, the sea salt. We're not gonna use all this sea salt. We'll probably use about a cup of this sea salt. This is used to wilt the cabbage and start to break down the cabbage leaves so that they can absorb the other flavors. All right, let's get cutting. All right, here's the start of the show. This is a Napa cabbage. This is probably a four pound nap of cabbage I've got. What I want to do is just make this into bite-sized chunks. Start out, I don't want to cut it straight through. I want to leave a little bit of this kind of cabbage texture. So the trick is you just work your way through the core a little bit and then tear it. And you see how you kind of maintain those, those leaf edges. That's nice, instead of the cut edges, you do that again. and then you get all those nice full leaves. You don't get so many cut edges and it just makes a nicer finished product. Pretty, all right here. Now for the rest of them, just cut. I like to do, for the larger leaves, I'll cut a little narrower. And then see, I've got this big stalk back here. So I want that kind of in smaller bits. And then as you get to nothing but stalk, um, I go a little finer, right in that ditch. Um, kind of tear some of the wider strips. That's good. All right, so just do all your, your cabbage up that way. And then uh, the narrower strips down here where it's just the stalk. Now what I want to do is salt this. I'm using a lot more salt than I usually do because I'm going to rinse this. So I really, I, I'm not going to use a lot of salt. I'm really not going to smush this as much as I usually do, like when I'm making sauerkraut. I'm really just going to stir this in and make sure that there's a little bit of salt on most of the cabbage. Okay? and I'm gonna let this sit. Every half an hour, I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna work up, there's gonna be the, you're gonna to start to get some, some brine down the bottom of the bowl, and I'm just gonna stir it up. I'm sort of twist it around like that, do it in both directions, and bring that salty water, that salty cabbage juice up into the cabbage, and you can see I'm sort of stirring it up from the bottom. Every 15, 20 minutes, just, we're gonna cut up the rest of the vegetables now, but I wanna make sure I'm, I'm continually bringing that salt up so all of this cabbage gets salted. And then in about two hours, we'll go ahead and rinse it and mix it in with the other vegetables. Easiest way to attack this is cut it in half and give yourself a flat surface to rest on. Once you get it cut in half, you can cut it into, into uh, well, half moons, I guess, and then we'll cut it into matchsticks. 
So this action is, first you want to cut your slices. Look what I'm doing, I'm using my fingers for a guide right here. So I can move my fingers back just as far as I want, adjust, make my cut, hold that, and slide my knife out. Who needs a Cuisinart? Just keep your little fingertips tucked underneath there. Once you've got these, you can make your matchsticks. Or if that doesn't work, fan them out this way. And cut your matchsticks. Great. For the green onions, I'm just going to trim them and rinse them first. Take most of the white off. And take the little, these aren't too bad. If, usually the tops are kind of wilted and dried. I usually just cut them off by habit. I usually like to cut them on a bias. It gives you sort of the best of both worlds instead of cutting, you can just cut them right into little tiny rings if you want. Um, I like to do them on a diagonal here. I think that comes out a little bit more interesting looking. And in the bowl with the other vegetables. For the carrots, let's just trim them. and then peel them. For your carrots, you want to matchstick them. Usually cut them into, you know, about the matchstick lengths. And then you can dig your fingernails into them and cut your matchstick width. and then cut each piece. All right, cut your slices and then cut your matchsticks. Every so often while you're working on your kimchi ingredients, you just want to give this a nice toss. Make sure you're bringing the salt up from the bottom of the bowl. Give it a little squeeze. Get that salt well incorporated into the, into the mixture here. It's starting to get wetter than it was. It's starting to do its work. You can see how wet my hands are. I didn't even rinse this cabbage. This is just the moisture coming out of the, out of the cabbage from the salt action. Okay, so so far we've got a bowl of salted cabbage, another bowl of salted cabbage, and we've got all our vegetables. We've got our julienne carrots, our green onions, and our daikon radish. Next is the sauce. So into our Cuisinart goes the onion, peeled and cut in half, the ginger, the garlic, and a quarter of a cup of fish sauce. You can use more if you like fish sauce, or leave it out entirely. Completely up to you. Process it until there's nothing left. Knock down the sides.
and finish it up. That's ready. All right, next part of our kimchi recipe is the porridge. What we're gonna do is make a porridge out of the rice flour and some water. I've got half a cup of water here and a tablespoon of rice flour. And you just wanna cook this until it's dissolved and bubbly. Let's give that a minute to boil. Once it boils, give it a good stir. It takes about three or four minutes to cook. But see how it's making those big thick bubbles? It's ready, it's done its thing. All right, once you get your glue made, put it into a mixing bowl. Add the onion ginger mixture. And then taste the gochugaro, see what you think. I just tasted mine and it's pretty hot. Um, not everyone in my family likes super spicy stuff. I think I'm gonna use a third of a cup. And just give this a good mix. Add the fermenting paste to the vegetables to be fermented. I've got my nitriles on for this step. You don't want to touch the gochugaru. It's spicy. It will irritate your hands. It will, the, the heat will diminish somewhat while it ferments. Once it's fermented, it'll be a little bit more edible. But, and this isn't even really a hot batch, but if you did a super hot batch with a cup or two of gochugaru and this amount of cabbage, you're definitely going to want to have your hands protected, your skin protected from the red pepper. But get this so it's fairly well mixed together. And you can see we've got a lot of nice moisture in there from the, the onion juice and the little bit of uh, rice paste that we put in there. The cabbage was nice and wet from the rinse. So this is looking good. Next, we're going to want to pack it in a, in a crock or something to ferment it and you can pack it into mason jars, you can pack it into like an anchor hocking uh, cookie jar or something like that. You don't want to put it in plastic, you don't want to put it in metal. Right now, yeah, I've got it in a metal bowl, but as this ferments, it's going to become more acid. The pH is going to be lower, and if you don't have a high quality stainless steel container to ferment it in, you could potentially leach some toxins out of the metal with the acid that's produced by the ferment. So, look for a crock, look for, I mean, I don't have a nice uh, a Korean fermenting crock, kimchi crock, but I do have this old crock that uh, has been in the family for a while, so I'm going to be using this. Once you get your crock cleaned out, just pack this down in there. And then get all that good juice. Press it. And as you press it down, make sure you get all the air bubbles out of it. You really want to make sure that we're going to ferment this in an anaerobic or non-oxygen environment. So we'll push it down, get all the air bubbles out. 
and now we need to seal the top. For my crock seal, I'm going to use a gallon Ziploc bag. Squeeze all the air out of it and zip it up. And then you can just lay this right flat on the, on the kimchi. Give it a little push, like I said, to get that air out of there. And this is ready. This is going to ferment for minimum four or five days, maximum a couple of months. I usually like to let it go for about a month. So I'm going to put this down in the basement where the temperature is about 65 degrees. You don't want it too warm. You, you want to find a place to ferment that is fairly cool, just maybe a little below room temperature. If you don't have such a place, if it's at room temperature, if it's at, what, 68, 72 degrees, it's fine. It might ferment a little quickly, but it'll be fine. Okay, it's been just about a month that this has been sitting in my crock that we packed it all in there. Not a bit of mold. This looks really nice. We dig into it a little bit. Smells just like the deli counter at the Korean market, honestly. Looks nice, still nice and crisp. Here's one of our uh, daikons. Nice and crisp, quite sour. Um, not very spicy, surprisingly. Ooh, now I'm getting a little bit of a, a little bit of heat on the tip of my tongue. Yeah, that, that heat really kind of sneaks up on you at the, you don't get that at first. But, mmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is delicious. Um, still some moisture down in the bottom of the crock here. No off colors, no mold, um, no funny smells. Um, this is perfect. I think I can take this and pack this in some mason jars and put it in the fridge. And it'll stay this way. If you dare, um, put it back in the basement. Yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and pack this in jars. The, really, the easiest way to do this is just with a pair of tongs. And this is a half gallon mason jar. You can literally just fill up a couple jars with this stuff. You can try using a, a canning funnel or a, something like that. I really find this is the easiest way to pack jars quickly with sauerkraut. For uh, lids on your mason jars, I mean, you can go old school. You can do the, the canning lid and, and the ring. I'm not sure I really like this amount of metal in contact with this. This is pretty acidic now. I found these, there's a link for them below in the, in the description, but these are nice. These are just hard plastic and uh, just pop them on and this is ready for the fridge. So that's my kimchi. Hope you enjoyed watching and um, seeing me put together a batch of kimchi and waiting the month for it to be edible. Like I said, you can, you can put this back downstairs. You can ferment right in this jar if you like. Just loosen the lid a little bit and, um, you know, because this will continue to ferment a little bit, give off carbon dioxide. So, you know, just put the lid on loosely to keep the dust out and this is good or um, put it right into the refrigerator. So thanks for watching. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time.